I woke up uh, on July 31st, 1981 in a, in a jail cell in Sioux Falls, South Dakota, under arrest for resisting arrest, disorderly conduct, and failure to vacate. And I'm alive and sober today because of the access that I had to treatment in 1981 for my alcoholism. But despite the legislation that Paul Wellstone originally wrote, and then uh, Paul, Patrick and I worked on together for 12 years, legislation which was passed by Congress, as Patrick mentioned, and signed into law by President Bush in 2008, October of 2008, despite the fact it was an act that hundreds of thousands of Americans today in health plans are being denied their rights under the federal parity law. Unfortunately and tragically, tragically, many insurance companies have put plans in place that circumvent the parity law and interim regulations, thereby restricting patients' access to life-saving care. For example, many, many treatment health plans are excluding residential treatment for substance abuse. Other plans, as hard, hard as it is to believe, continue to require patients to fail first at outpatient before admitting them to inpatient. I mean, that makes a lot of sense. Not. <laughs> and that's regardless of other medical necessity criteria being met. That's outrageous. And these other shameful, and they are shameful, they're blatant abuses by health plans are illegal and they must be stopped. According to Faces and Voices of Recovery and their spokesperson, Pat Taylor, our dear friend, a number of health insurance plans have actually created new plans, new plans, brand new plans that specifically exclude benefits which should be offered under the new regulations such as methadone maintenance treatment. They specifically exclude a number of, of uh, treatments that are authorized and uh, in, in terms of the statute. Well, in the absence of regulatory guidance, many insurance companies have released plans, and I mean many, the majority, that fall far short of what Congress intended in the statute. And I thank Faces and Voices of Recovery. How many of you are members of Faces and Voices of Recovery? Thank you. Thank you, all of you, for uh, uh, calling to the attention of the American people and the regulators the um, abuses that are ongoing. Because the discriminatory treatment needs to be addressed immediately. Federal regulators must enforce the new regulations. And it's absolutely unconscionable that a final rule has not been issued. I mean, as I said earlier, as Patrick said, this legislation became law in 2008, signed by the President. Nearly four years, we still don't have a final rule. In my 28 years as a legislator, no bill that I was a co-sponsor or sponsor of took such time to get its final rule. So I respectfully, and I mean that respectfully, say to Secretary Sebelius, Solis, and Geithner, please issue a final rule on parity without further delay. There really is no excuse for the failure to enforce parity. Access to treatment for people suffering the ravages of mental illness, chemical addiction, is a life or death issue for millions of Americans. Let me close by saying this, the bottom line, it's about time we treat diseases of the brain the same as diseases of the body. No more discrimination against people with mental illness or addiction. No more higher deductibles. No more higher co-payments. No more limited treatment stays. No more decisions made by the insurance companies instead of the doctors and the treatment professionals where the decisions properly lie. It's about time we have a final rule that ends this discrimination against people with diseases of the brain. Thank you.